are you seeing yourself as documenting or are you seeing yourself as creating fine art and is there a difference between the two i don't know what to do in my life the last night in the hospital i have a dream and in my dream it was a uh, uh, days i speak with some old man and uh, and the man said uh, uh, who are you yannick what you want to do and and i reply uh, i am a visual person and uh, it is the way of my life you're not fabricating something out of thin air Hello, this is Evil O from Udaipur, and once again, I am interviewing somebody for Dialogues, and today we're very fortunate to have as our guest Yannick Comier, who <laughs> is sitting in somewhere in France, but I'm not exactly sure. Where are you locked down, Yannick? In southwest of France. It's called Dordogne. Ah. It's a wonderful place. Wonderful. <laughs> Beautiful place. Yes. Yeah. Do they let you get out of the house at all, or are you pretty? Yes. Happy? Now, for a few days ago, we can go out, but okay, we are okay. not uh, allowed to go more than hundred kilometers. Okay. But uh, it doesn't change much now for me. It's home, or I go far away. But um... <laughs> just so you know, I, I tend to look over here because my big screen's over here. So it's not that I'm not paying attention to you when I look. This yeah, 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 yeah. I, but I like seeing you on the big screen. So that's why. <laughs> so, um, and besides that, I look better in profile. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just want to start the conversation off and you tell, don't go into your photographic series right away, but just tell a little bit about your background, how you became a photographer and how you ended up in India. How's that? Yeah, we can do like that. Yeah, sure. So um, actually, um, from my childhood, I was uh, drawing a lot. Uh, I love in I love art and paintings and and cinema. And then when I was around twenty, I don't know what to do in my life. I was like uh, completely lost and and. Um, and then I have a, I, I bought a little camera, a compact camera, and start to take pictures. Not nothing serious. And then later, um, I have a dream. Actually, I was in hospital, and uh, and don't know when I for three months, I think. And then when I, the last night in the hospital, I have a dream, and in my dream it was uh, uh, days. I speak with some old man, and uh, and the man said. Uh, uh, who are you, Yannick? What you want to do? And and I reply, uh, I am a visual person, and uh, it is the way of my life. And and when I wake up from that dream, I was completely in shock. And then I go out of the hospital. I was already with my wife, and I go to a camera shop, and then uh, I have the money, and I was front of the shop, and and I call my wife, and. I was, you know, not certain to, to buy it. And she said, buy it. And buy, buy did the, the did you initially buy the twin lens reflex camera? No, it was, a, it was a Nikon FM2 because I speak with some photographers and they told me 50 millimeters with a Nikon is the best way to start. It's the okay. best tool. And I follow this advice. And, and then I, I, buy, the I buy the camera. I had the same when I was younger. So. Yes, yes, yes. And then when I buy after, I, every day I was taking pictures, like uh, it was an obsession to learn, to learn uh, the effects. Did you go to school for photography at all? Then after, yes. After, after sometimes, uh, after one year, I think I was working as a watchman at that time because I did several different jobs because I was lost. And then, uh, and then I have another trouble. I go hospital to the hospital, and when I go out uh, of the hospital, uh, I decide to 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 take class of photography, and um, I visit many schools, speak with many people, 
And one one school uh, was I show my portfolio and speak about my motivation and and the director like it and he said, okay, it's a uh, it's a uh, half part time school. You have to find a job into photography to to get into the school. You have one month to do it. That was one of the conditions of the school was that you have yes. a job in photography. Yes. Okay. And I bring my bicycle, my bag, and my CV, and all these things. And I go to meet everyone in Paris because I was in Paris at that time. And all studios, uh, agency, everything. I meet the people. I see in one month. I meet. Uh, I see 150 people. And the last one uh, was a very old studio, the most old studio, fashion studio, and advertising studio in Paris and and uh, I see the boss who was an old woman around 80, 80 years old uh, and she liked me and she take me in and she said you come you come tomorrow morning at nine. Oh, how and, wonderful. So and that was when, your start. And I start like that yes and then uh, when I come back uh, at home in the evening after this meeting uh, I was completely excited and uh, I received uh, another call from the studio and they said, no, you will come to seven with another assistant. You will make the coffee and Paolo Roversi is coming and you will be uh, the fourth assistant of uh, Roversi. And I start like that. I was amazed by, the, by what I see these days. But very quickly you became, you were working for a lot of the big magazines in France, yeah? Like Vogue and things? Yeah, but I was assistant. You were assistant, okay. I was assistant of photographer. I was learning my job. Okay, but you, you met a lot of the big magazine people and the students. Yeah, the, 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 the yeah. best photographer uh, in, into fashion and advertising and all these things. Yeah, you're lucky. Paris is a great place to do all of that. And uh, yeah. what you're yeah, saying... Yes. Probably inspirational to a lot of young photographers. Yeah, definitely, yes. Yes, you know. yes, yes. So how did you leave that exciting life and decide to go to Pondicherry? Uh, then after, uh, after the studio, I worked there for three years. So I, I assist uh, around 300 photographers. Um, and I learned a lot, uh, a lot of techniques and, and things. But I wanted to do documentary and... And then when I go out of that, I was in uh, I was in an agency called Vostok. Okay. Uh, and then after some one year, I think uh, they they wanted to send me in uh, in Brazil as a correspondent. Okay. But my, at that time, uh, my wife have a scholarship to go to India for for the dance because she's a dancer. And she have a scholarship from Indian government and, and French government. And uh, it was a trouble because um, I was going to Brazil. She was going to India. It was a big trouble. But I decided to make a file uh, with all big events in India could happen in 2003, 2004. And then I give to my to my director of the agency, and and then she said, "Okay, I, I follow you." So and you both you both went I, to India then. Then I go to India as a, as a correspondent for one year. Okay, as a and correspondent, you were actually a correspondent for a while. Okay. Yes. I often think of you as the independent photographer in India, but you weren't. You were working as a correspondent for a while. Uh, in the beginning, only for one year, actually. Okay, because after, okay. because after I have to come back to Paris, but I decide to stay in India. Okay. And I shift. Uh, I, I I I quit. Uh, I quit the the agency. Were you initially in Pondicherry? Was that your first place, or no, no, in Chennai, in Chennai, in my Lapo. Okay. Yes. Okay. And it was a shock when I arrived in India. It was a shock. Uh, it was your first time. It was my first time. I didn't. I, I don't know anything at that time about about India, nothing. And and I feel like uh, it was home. Yeah, you fell in yeah. love with it rather rapidly. I got the feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. In one day, I was feeling it's home. How many children do you have? I have one children. One child. One child. Okay. One child. Yeah. One boy or a girl? Girl, four That's years great. old. Okay, nice. She's what born in Chennai. 
she was born in Chennai. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I always think of you as one of the most amazing photographers that I Thank know, you. honestly. I think you're you. spectacular. But while you were in Pondicherry, you were always so, I want to use the word shy. You were very reclusive. And yes. I remember we first met because you suggested to Kasha Van, who was running yes. the Pondi Art Wall at the time, you invited me down. You had suggested to her that she invite me down for the Pondi Art Wall. Exactly. And I did an installation. That's the first time I met you, I think. Yes, I remember that. Yeah. I remember right. And then, of course, we met later as that grew into Pondi Photo. Yes. But many times when I would try to track you down, you were always off traveling on a bus somewhere. You yes. were always going from village to village. And yes. I, I kind of related to you, too, because you were shooting with the twin lens reflex at the time. But it yes. wasn't a Raleflex. It was, what was it? Mamiya, Mamiya C330. And what caused you to choose that? I'm curious. Because most people try to do the Raleflex all the time. Yes, uh, actually, it's a, it's a friend of me uh, who one day uh, uh, gave me his camera for tes testing. And it was in 2005, 2005, I think. And I make a small work, little project uh, uh, with this camera, and I enjoy a lot. Because, you know, with the, with the FM2 and all that, um, 35 millimeters, uh, I was, the style was very French. Uh, I was with the golden number, the, you know, the, uh, all this uh, crazy composition and it was not me. It was, it with was the something golden like... Mean, you were with the golden mean and composition? Yes. Okay. And, and when I look at my picture is the picture was saying, look, look what you can do with a camera. And it's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> you yeah. know, I, I wanted to, to do something simple, simple as possible, but uh, impactful, no? Uh, in terms with uh, uh, the relation I have with the subject. And with this camera, I was into composition. But I was not the empathy. Was, I was losing a little empathy with the with this camera. That's why I like the the twin lens for the the the, well, the square the, format. To me, is much more can open for somebody who's interested in a aesthetic. I yes, find. and I think the rectangular format fits better the documentary feel. And I don't yeah, know yeah. why that is. I can't explain it. But whenever I would shoot in square format, it always seemed like things somehow became more beautiful in a square format. <laughs> they were easier to compose. I, maybe I shouldn't use the word easier, but they, it yeah. lent itself to more beautiful compositions. Whereas with the rectangular format, I was sort of like, well, I always wanted to sort of cut this end off, you know, like, <laughs> yes, yes, so yes. Long, you know? <laughs> so anyway. So but anyway, with the, the square format, the problem is after sometimes you, you repeat yourself easily. Uh, yeah. That's the problem with the with the square format, but uh, I'm still into it, and let's see for six seven later. <laughs> so okay, so you stop working for the agency, and then you start thinking of yourself as a budding fine arts photographer, correct? No, uh, before that, I was uh, I create my own agency with some Indian friends. Uh, oh. I was calling uh, Trikaya Photo. Uh, um, we opened it uh, in two thousand seven. Okay. And I closed in 2012. Okay. Uh, and at, when it's around 2010, 11, I start to, to work in more. So were, was that agency selling overseas? It was selling overseas or selling the Indian newspapers or magazines? It was more, it was more uh, yeah, uh, out of India, actually, because the, the rate of India was too low for to survive. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. For, in the, they didn't, in the, they didn't in the pay magazine. enough. No, 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 not at all. And by this time, your wife was already teaching or something, correct? Yeah, yeah, she was teaching uh, yoga and uh, she was still dancing and she's still dancing actually. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So tell us about some of your first series because I've got it all written down here. But so you have some of your, I'm forgetting what your first series was called right now. Um, uh, it wasn't the name of Ram, it was something else. 
No, actually, uh, uh, actually, I did many series. I did uh, many more than twenty series in India. But you, uh, you wanna what just I like explain some of your favorite series and how they came about. Yeah, it's when I start to shoot with the Mamiya, it changed my perspective of what I wanted to do it. And uh, I think uh, the first uh, declic was uh, with the in between about the transgenders in South India. <clears throat> we call them the Aravanis and, uh, and also the gypsies, the Nari Kuravas. Uh, and I start slowly to work uh, with these two communities. Uh, and then in 2013, I go to Chhattisgarh to, to meet the Ramnamis. Uh, actually, I was, uh, I read um, a thesis uh, on the Ramnamis uh, on internet, I think. And uh, I, I make a research and there was nothing about them. And I decide to, to go to meet them. With a certain point of view, because when I was around 12 or 13 years old, I see a Japanese movie called Kwaidan okay. uh, with a, a very strong aesthetic. Uh, I forget the name of the director. But anyway, in, in, in the movie, uh, to pro there is a sequence, if I remember right, uh, uh, to protect from the ghost, uh, one, one monk uh, make a calligraphy on his body. And when I meet the Ramnamis, I, I have this aesthetic in, in mind. And I wanted to cut the perspective with a background uh, uh, with the name of Ram on it, write, writing. Uh, and, and it means you have the tattoo on the face, you have the background, and you have the, the costume. And, you know, it's, it's very graphic. It's like a calligraphy when you see the picture. And yeah, the sacred name of Ram is one of my favorite series of yours. Yeah. I love them all, but I really like that one a lot. But it seems like throughout your series, you're always very interested in concealment in some way, like either like through tattoos or through masks or through makeup. But yes. that's sort of a, a, a thread that runs through your photography. Have you thought about that at all? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's an obsession. It's an obsession about <laughs> identity, okay. identity as a community. Uh, but if you see in my picture, it's always one character, mostly one character into the picture. Sometimes two, three, but mainly it's a portrait, no? And as a portrait is, my picture speak about an individual person, but the work speak about a community. Right. And the identity of the community. And my one picture will speak an identity of one character. Right. One, one person, one individual. Well, that's pretty much the same with me with my shots that I do out in Varda. Or here yes. In or, you know, it's one person, but it's, it's part of a larger story, part of a larger yes. community. Exactly. That's being told. Um, yeah, yeah, there is a, yeah, there is a questioning about uh, um, uh, how, you, how a, com um, a community with a strong identity uh, find its place into a, a larger, a large society. So when you were doing the series, The Sacred Name of Ram, yes, or when you were doing the, your first series on the transgenders, which I think you said was your first series, yes. um, did you spend a lot of time, because I'm always asked this question, do you spend a lot of time getting to know the people, blah, 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 blah. How much time do you spend socializing before you start clicking? It, yeah, it, it depends. Before you start clicking right away. Yeah, it depends. Actually, it depends of the project how it go. Uh, it it there is no recipe actually. But <clears throat> if you take for example, uh, the Ramnamis was <clears throat> is is the shorter series I made. Uh, it was only two weeks. I sh I shot and I came back with twenty pictures or twenty five pictures. But and I have not. Uh, uh, not so much time to uh, to uh, to work on them. I, actually, it would be good to to keep going, but it it's very complicated uh, complicated to go to Chhattisgarh. It's it's a long process, and that's why it's, it's a very short uh, uh, story. But if you take uh, in between and the work on the transgenders, it takes me seven years. Uh, oh, that was uh, a seven-year project, really. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, 
I didn't really and I go again that. and and uh, I go to Virupuram in Chennai and I have many friends transgenders and I keep doing it but it was easy because it was geographically was around me and it was more easy to to do it like that uh, right. to take time and to meet the people again and again like like uh, like the gypsies actually it was well I think the the image of the girl holding up the the crow yeah or, or the crow or whatever that's yeah. from the gypsy series yes exactly right? yes yes uh, one i really love i actually have it on my wall right here in yeah. my, my yeah, office yeah. i'm speaking from i really love that one but i mean these are questions people would ask me did you ask her to hold up the bird or was it something she naturally did and you just clicked it and does yeah. it make a difference does it matter yeah, yeah. For me, it doesn't matter much uh, uh, with my with my way of seeing photography today. But what happened is, uh, I was uh, early morning uh, in uh, with his brother who was hunting birds, and he sp we spent two two hours in the forest, and he was hunting, and he catch around uh, I don't know six seven crow. And then when we come back to the to the clan uh, to meet the to the village uh, of the gypsies, uh, he gave one to his sister, and she was very proud, and and she she showed me like that. But the perspective of the of the street, the already the sun was too hard because in Tamil yeah, Nadu yeah, the, yeah. the sun is too hard, and I said, okay, just move there. And I click the picture. I make three. So three, it's basically pictures. do the do the same thing again, but just let yeah. allow me to shift you into better light. Exactly. Which I think is perfectly fine. I don't think that you're like you're not fabricating something out of thin air. No, no, no. It it, it can happen. It depends on the project. But for this project, it was not like that. Yeah. How about that wonderful uh, photo? Another one I really like, of course, is the one with the the hand with the. I think it's a toy gun. I'm not sure if it's a toy yeah, gun. Yeah, yeah. And coming in from the edge. Um, yes. What series is that from? Uh, Masquerade for the Gods. That's the Masquerade from the Gods. Okay. Yeah. It, it's yeah, a yeah. Did that happen rather spontaneously? Uh, it, it actually is the same things with the crow uh, pictures. <laughs> I see the, the, the scene and then uh, when I come with the camera, they stop it and I, I just tell them to, to do it again. Right, right. Okay. See, but this, this picture, is, I have what? a dream of it before. Ah. Okay. I have a, I dream I dream of this kind of picture and when when I see into reality it was like a slap in my so face. You literally, you literally follow your dreams. Uh, a lot, a lot. A lot. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's good. I have wonderful <laughs> dreams all the time, but I really have wonderful dreams. But I don't know yeah. if I always follow them so perfectly. <laughs> but um, yeah, one no, of but my there is some kind of synchronicity with what happened into into my soul, my my spirit, and what I can see sometimes into reality. It's not always no, like that. No, what I what I do out at the studio in Varda and what I used to do at Chinar Villa here in Udaipur is, you know, people always say, well, they're posed portraits, which they are in ways they're posed. So I yeah. give people a lot of freedom to present themselves in the way they want to be presented. Yes, but I try to click the camera when I recognize something that I have seen on the street, you know, yes. it's like I've recreated it in my studio, but I do the clicks when it's getting like, no, this is, this is like something I would see in everyday life, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. even though it's been recreated and it's hard to get that sometimes, but you know it when you see it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know that feeling. <laughs> I know that. Feeling. Oh, that feeling. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So anyway, let's talk about Masquerade of the Gods. I wrote the catalog essay for that at one of your shows, I remember. Yes, and yes. I was really happy you asked me to write that. Um, yeah. Tell what is behind Masquerade of the Gods? What is the tradition? Actually, it's a, it's a festival uh, called Dasara. Uh, I think in the North they call it Dasara. Uh, it's different pronunciation. Uh, but in this particular village uh, uh, called Kulasaya Kapatinam, uh, there is a gathering of uh, lakhs of people and maybe maybe 10, 10 or 15 percent of these people will dress as a god. Okay. Uh, uh, not only god, but uh, everything is the uh, charge of 
uh, it's or it's luminous, something with charge of energy for them. It means he can be a, he can be Shiva, but he can be also Michael Jackson. Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah. You know, everything can be good. Oh, so they, by, by the act of transforming, they're also taking on the energy. Yes. Thing, right? Yes, by yes, yes. So, and, but the main character of this festival is the goddess uh, Kali. And okay. she's very sacred for this festival. It means when someone will dress as a Kali, and there is a puja, there is a transcendence, and the goddess comes into the body of the person with a trans dance. And, and then the people will respect this person as a, as a Kali. Right, right, right. And then they will go to a temple. And then after they go to, into the sea. And, and, uh, and, uh, and the sea will wash them. And they will come back human. Do you find That's the ritual. When, okay, so when you're doing a series like that, are you seeing yourself as documenting? Or are you seeing yourself as creating fine art and is there a difference between the two i i have no idea i have no idea i i am a photographer i don't know if i am an artist but i am a photographer and and i, I before i work on that project uh, i see some of my friend was working on that festival but they was uh, doing like a reportage but when i visit this village for the first time what amazed me is always this uh, uh, change of identity, no? How, and, and the different character, the different archetype we can, you can see. Uh, I was amazed by this. Uh, uh, a woman can become a monkey, an uh, old man can become young, a boy can become a girl, you know? All this change of identity, like the carnival in, in Europe or somewhere else. And and I was amazed by these archetypes. Uh, and uh, I find it, for I me, find that's why I decide to make portraits, a series of portraits of that. It's very interesting in India to me because much of this transformation that takes place via masquerade or costuming or role playing, and you know, yeah. you see the same thing up here with the Gauri dancers in Udaipur. Yes. It's, um, it's a chance for people who are rural and oftentimes poor and don't have a lot of opportunities in their life to just yeah. indulge in fantasy and just become something else. And that's yeah, so yeah. important. And I don't think that in the West we do that so much because we have a lot of opportunities to become things and do things. I don't think that we do quite as much role playing, although maybe we do with things like superheroes or something. I don't know. But Actually, in uh, in Europe, in the in the countryside of Europe, there is a lot of festival very similar than this one. You've uh, been doing some of those now, right? Yes, now yes. Gone yes. back to France. Yeah, you know, I do in about, uh, Spain and Portugal. Sorry. What have you What have you been doing in Spain and Portugal now before the COVID hit us? What were you actually, doing? Actually, I I work on this kind of uh, ritual, so they call it Carnaval, but actually is. Uh, for some of them, I think it's more older than Carnival because uh, it looked like uh, um, it's come from the, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, uh, maybe the, ah, oh, merde. Um, before, because the Carnival was uh, in the Middle Age, no? Uh, right, mainly right. in the Middle Age. But I think some some of the tradition are more older than that okay i, I don't find the world but because they are very raw uh the costume are very uh made with bones and and uh so it's very almost shamanistic and archetypal yeah it looked like that it looked like that and and some of them are very strong when you see them when you see this festival they are very uh effective in terms of energy and uh they are very raw because you can see some carnival, but there there is no energy. There is you have nice costume, but the, they just walk in the street and nothing. But but some of them, it's uh, there is a there is a there is a story behind. There is a mythology and 
there is a, there is a violence also because they can beat you if you are too close and you know there is there is energy and I am more interested in. Well, you see the same thing in India too. They really get an energy when you said beat you. you know, yes, like, yes. You see that in Gauri. They get so possessed at a certain point that they're just like. Yes, yes, you know, yes, uh, yes. They're possessed. They literally will jump up and just be possessed. You know. Yes, yes, yes being possessed that's part of the belief system that they are possessed by the god yeah god, you know so do you miss india um yes sometimes sometimes but sometimes. i have uh, yeah i i would like to come uh, to come again sometimes to meet my friends and to take pictures for sure we miss <laughs> you yeah. So, so do you want to talk about that at all? Why you left India? There was a big sort of purge down in Pondicherry. No, because no, no, I don't want to talk much about that because for me, I I try to look forward what is the next and uh, not what was in the past. Uh, I don't care much, but it's the same policy uh, you can see around the world uh, uh, with the politics and all this uh, Picking out foreigners, xenophobia. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All right. the, all this, but it happened everywhere in the world. It's not a specificity of uh, of India, actually, and right. that's the that's the things. And, I always got my blessings that I'm still here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every year, every year, I never know because you never know, you know. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Country. Let's um, see. It's it's uh, yeah. And as much as it feels like home. I know I can be ejected at any time. So. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. when you when you move in any countries, is the same actually. And I realize that, uh, yeah, the world is like that. What to do? <laughs> Keep doing what we are. So, do you have any? Are there any series that we forgot to talk about? I think there are. What series did we not? Uh, talk actually, about? there is a the the main larger series called Dravidian Catharsis. Uh, uh, there is three uh, series on it. Catharsis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk there is three. Yeah, there is three series on on, on that. Uh, uh, actually, three three projects to make one, and is the part one is uh, Mascard for the Gods. Uh, uh, Dravidian, Dravidian Catharsis and Theaterland. Uh, okay. All these three body of work who make can make one. Uh, it it is about the tradition and myth and 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 rituals in Tamil Nadu in the in Dravidian lands. Uh, and what we was talking before now when uh, when the villagers change into God, there is this kind of catharsis is there. It, mm. It's a catharsis. And do they also use masks or is it more makeup? Yeah, it's both. Both? both. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, both. Okay. But it's the energy, they, it's come out, no? all the, the, the bad things coming out and, and a new life can start. Right, and right, that's, right. that is interesting. It can be very violent uh, for themselves. They can, they can make piercing and... Uh, uh, yeah, beat themselves, uh, and they have a strong. They can dance into the fire, and yeah, whatever. And that's very interesting for me. Okay, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm and I did that for fifteen years. Actually, I work on that project not fifteen, thirteen years uh, with three three body of work. But the main part of this of this work is. Uh, is more about certain uh, certain rituals in Tamil Nadu, in the small village, in remote area mainly. And I, I don't uh, I don't make any uh, you know I don't follow all rituals in Tamil Nadu. I choose a certain point who are interesting uh, for me for my for my. And what family. was the criteria for your choice? Why did you choose certain ones and not others? For the energy, for the, energy for the, for the power energy. of uh, of what I can feel when I go there and what I can how I or what I can get as a, as a as a photo. Right, right, right. I select them like that. Have you ever gotten like tempted to shoot in color? I think uh, color is a very difficult thing. Uh, I think. Uh, 
the people uh, said black and white is very particular, but I think color is very particular. Mm. Uh, you need to know about uh, colors to make good picture in color. And I see people, they shoot in colors and they get the colors what they have around. But some photographers think about the colors and they play with it. And yeah, I think yeah. I don't have this ability to, 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 to play with the colors. It becomes uh, very, very complex with many colors if you're going to do a good job. Anybody yes, can take yeah. a color photo and, you know, oversaturate it and make it look like, oh, wow, this is really popping out. But that's yeah. not necessarily a good color photograph. And it's difficult also to find your own identity through colors. And some, fo yeah. some photographers have disabilities, but I don't think I, I have. Um, what uh, photographers do you personally admire? Who are uh, your sort of role uh, models? A lot, a lot of photographers, or a lot of photos, but uh, um, I think the main inspiration when I was doing Dravidian Catharsis was uh, uh, Graciela Ichobide from, Ichobide from from Mexico. Okay. And Issei Suda from Japan. But actually, I have uh, I am uh, gluttony about image. Uh, it can be paintings or, or, or photography, but uh, I'm always looking at uh, image, and it's it's a mix inside my mind of of all that. Uh, the the things is to to find your own way to all these catalogs I have in my in my brain. Yeah, I mean, one thing that always amazes me about you, Yannick, is you just have so many images and you've shot so much. Yeah. A powerful body of work, and yet it just isn't as well known as it ought to be, I always feel. And um, do you have any desires or hopes that this will become books at some day? I know you've had some. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, in the past, I have a lot of uh, possibilities to, to make a books, but. Um, Sometimes I have a problem with the uh, with the publishers, or we was not agree for certain things, and or I was unsatisfied uh, about some things because it's really I am uh, happy about my work actually, mm. and I I, I I try to articulate the work, and finally I don't find a way, and that's make the life complicated for for a book. But um, this time I am. Uh, working for two books and they will come uh, with two publishers one is in Lille in north of France called uh, light motive uh, edition and they will uh, they will make a book about uh, we will make a book together with uh, with the work I did in Spain and Portugal and France Good. and uh, normally if everything is okay uh, <laughs> uh, it will come this year and another book called Dravidian Catharsis, with the mix of these three series, uh, okay. will come beginning of uh, 2021, did normally. You ever, did you ever get your catalog out on the transgenders? No, I wanted to do it, but I when I was... There was another essay for that, and it never came to fruition. It, it will come, but later, because, you know, I have a lot of trouble when I was working on that. I have a lot of trouble uh, with India and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. yeah my well, mind can shift to... For you. Exactly. In, in France. And it takes time to, to come back, because after 15 years in India, you, 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 you become Indian. And you, when you come back to France, you have to... You need time yeah. for... Yeah. It's like, oh my God, I'm back in the West. You know? Yes, exactly. And my mind was mainly uh, Asian, no? Right. And it takes time to, to understand the people around you when you come back. I would, I would absolutely hate to have to go back to the U.S. I would just hate it. I mean, I, I'll happily go any other place in Asia. And yeah. I would go to Italy. I would go to Italy, you know, Yes. Yeah. if I had the money. <laughs> but, but I really love to be in India, so I always keep my fingers crossed I'll be able to stay here. Yes. Anyway. Yannick, yeah. nice talking to you. Is there anything else you'd like to say? No, I think uh, I just say thank you to you for the invitation of this dialogue. Uh, I don't know if it's good or not, but uh, I enjoy to do Fine. it. Fine, yeah. to answer your self-doubt, you are an artist, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I, I have no idea. Include yourself, you are an artist. <laughs> Do you want to say to your Indian friends? 
Hello, guys. Miss yeah. you. A lot of people remember you. Yeah, yeah. So, and many I remember of them. <laughs> yeah, many people miss you here. Yeah, okay. Very nice. So let's end it. And I think this was long enough. And yes. thank you for joining Evil O. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. <laughs>